some of the top, uh, the five of the top ten songs, because I couldn't use all the songs, because some of the songs are just absolute trash, and I didn't want to introduce those things or be responsible for what goes in your head uh, to that degree. Um, and if, if I showed the words up here to some of those songs, it would just look like a redacted CIA statement. It was just black lines all the way down, and it would just say, like, the and she the end. And that, that would be it. Um, just because some of it, there's just a lot of trash music out there. I don't know if you guys know that there's a lot of trash going around, so watch out for that kind of stuff. Um, but as we dive in, we're going to be going through these songs, and here's what I'm promising you. I have done my best, and you can ask Sarah, you can talk to Dana, I have done my best. I am not diving into the character, the personality of any of the artists. I'm not going to talk about the artists at all. I don't care about their backgrounds, I don't care about their beliefs, I don't care about um, where they're coming from, all right? All I've done is taken the lyrics from their songs, looked at the lyrics, seen what they have said about the song, so their explanation of the song, and then what, what I could deduce from those songs. And then we're gonna go through each song, and then I'm going to take really the lesson of that song, what is the lesson of that song that it is teaching, and look at what does the Bible say about that same lesson. This is not me coming up here to trash your music, all right? Because you can look right back at my music and you can do the same thing, all right? I'm not telling you not to listen to something. I'm not telling you to listen to something. What I'm telling you is everything has a message, all right? And that's all I want to do. I want to have a fun discussion of us looking at these songs and, and seeing what is going in our ears, all right? Because... Uh, like I said last week, all of us have used the excuse, I don't listen for the words, I just listen for the beat. That is not true. Because once your parents aren't around, you can sing every word of that song. All right? So don't lie to me. I was a kid 50 years ago. I know this stuff. All right? Remember, Thomas babysat me, and it was just on the So. <laughs> Tom. Thomas may be an old guy, but he's our old guy. Uh, so. There are many like him. <laughs> so tonight, we are going to jump into the song Circles by Post Malone. All right, does anybody know this song? I'm not going to ask if you like it or don't like it. Anybody know this song? All right, so this is uh, in the top ten. All right, I think this is, sorry, was like number three? I think it's number three. All right, the first two. Um, we're so explicit, it, I couldn't bring those up. So this was the first uh, non-explicit song on the list that we could bring up. Um, but there are some um, discussions in here. There are some innuendo and things that we are going to look at that this is a young adult song. I, From a parent standpoint, I would not want my young children with no discernment to listen to this song. I just wouldn't. That, that's my choice as a parent, and I can say that. I would not want them to listen to this song. There are um, uh, themes in here that I don't want them to have to start thinking about yet. And, um, and, and I, I don't know if they're at your age if I want them, but that's my choice as a parent to do that to my kids, all right? So uh, let me just read the lyrics really quick, and, and I'm going to break down each line or, or groups of lines as you go, all right? Again, not trashing the song. Not trashing your favorite artist. Don't care. Going through the message of the song. I don't want anyone to go home and say, this I, don't, I don't like or dislike. All right? I don't care if you like. That's between you, your parents, and God and the Holy Spirit. Okay, so, <laughs> all right, here we go. Uh, lyrics from top to bottom. Oh, 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 oh. I'm reading it. This is, I didn't come up with this. I'm reading. Can I sing it? Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Sorry, he's auto tuned. I'm not. Um, okay, here we go. We couldn't turn around till we were upside down. All right. So we, we couldn't turn around till we were upside down. I'll be the bad guy now, but no, I ain't too proud. I couldn't be there even when I try. You don't believe it. 
We do this every time. So let's break down those lines really quick. All right. So, oh, oh, we got the oh, oh, oh part. All right. That's just give you good worship song. You start there. All right. Yep. All right. We couldn't turn around until we were upside down. This means we couldn't stop doing what we were doing until there was tragedy. This is what he's saying. We couldn't turn around until we were upside down. Until everything fell apart, we couldn't stop. Right? I'll be the bad guy now, but no, I ain't too proud. He is ready. He's finally ready to break up with this girl. This is a breakup song if you don't know this, all right? So um, he is breaking up finally with this girl, but he said, I'm, I'll be the bad guy. I'm going to be the one that breaks it up, but I'm not going to be proud, so I'll do it, all right? I could, I, could do, I could be proud. I could just let this thing go and let you make the decision, but I'm going to make the decision um, because I'm going to do that. I couldn't be there even when I try, which shows an artificial love. There's an artificial love in this relationship. I couldn't be there. I tried and I tried and I tried, but I just couldn't muster enough love for you to make it real. All right? You don't believe it. We do this every time. So she says it can work. I want to make this work. It's got to work. You can see the emotional tie that is between them. She was willing to do anything. All right? You don't believe it. What are you saying? But we do this every time this happens, right? We get to the chorus. Seasons change and our love went cold. Feed the flame because we can't let go. Run away, but we're running in circles. Run away, run away. I dare you to do something. I'm waiting on you again. So I don't take the blame. Run away, but we're running in circles. Run away, run away, run away. Let go. So let's go through that. Seasons change, our love went cold. Feed the flame because we can't let go. You can see the whole song in circles. They're running in the circular pattern. They're doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. All right? Run away, running in circles, run away, run away. Pretty self-explanatory, all right? So as much as I want to run away, where do I end back? I end up right back where I started, all right? I'm waiting on you again, so I don't take the blame. He is waiting for her to call to want to get back together because he doesn't want to take the blame for when tragedy strikes again. All right? So he's taking the blame and breaking up, but he's waiting for her to get back together because that's really what he wants, but he's not going to be the one that says, you did this because you wanted to get back together. He's not going to take the blame for that. So run away, running in circles, run away, run away, run away. All right? Second verse. I got a feeling that it's time to let go. I say so. I knew that this was doomed from the get-go. Again, this whole relationship is built on false love. How do we know this? I knew that this was doomed from the get-go. All right? It's artificial. It's fake. It was not going to last. He knew this. You thought that it was special, special, but it was just the sex, though. It was just the sex, though. As I hear, as I still, and I still hear the echoes, I got a feeling that it's time to let go, let go. So this is the key line of the entire relationship. This is what the song is built on. You thought it was special, but it was just the sex. That's what we're getting from this. Why do they keep running in circles? Because sex keeps bringing them back. And when there's no true love, they will make up to just get back to the sexual feelings that they have for each other. All right? Seasons change, our love went cold, beat the flame because we can't let go, run away. We're running in circles, run away, run away. I dare you to do something, I'm waiting on you again so I don't take the blame. Running away, running in circles, run away, run away, run away. Maybe you don't understand what I'm going through. It's only me what you got to lose. So he's, he's saying, you don't understand, maybe you don't understand what's in my head. I don't know why it's so hard for you to leave. It's just me. What, what, both sides, he's saying, we both have to decide to break this off because we know it's not good. Make up your mind. Tell me what you're going to do. It's only me. Let it go. So we're seeing this back and forth. I, I'm making up my mind here, but you're not. And you're making up your mind here, and I'm not. But what are, they, what are they always coming back to? This fake 
artificial love that ends up in sex. And then it ends with the chorus again. So, what is the message of the song? I know as a parent how I read it, but I want to make sure I'm not reading this from just a parent's point of view. So am I reading these lyrics wrong? Would anyone interpret this any different than I have? Because if you can, I'm, I'm, I'm not arguing, I don't want to argue. I just want to make sure like I'm giving this song a fair shake. Because I really want to make sure like I'm not doing discredit. And as I've read the comments and as I've read why he wrote this song, he went through a, a breakup. That's why he wrote the song. And it was exactly like this. It was built on artificial love that meant nothing except this sexual feeling that kept bringing them back together. So, you know, it's a catchy song. I told Sarah I've listened to the song at least 15, 20 times in the last week because I wanted to make sure I really grasped it. And I've, I've played it today. I was like, man, this song is super catchy. It's a fun song. It needs. He's really, it's the only non-explicit Post Malone song, so it's, it's really safe to listen to in the office. Um, yeah, probably not going to put the greatest hits on my kid's birthday party, but it's a catchy song. It's fun, and I can see. Like, I, I, it's, a, it's a great song. But what is the message? The message is, you thought it was special. There was an artificial love that was happening. The feelings were happening. We had this emotional time. But in the very end, all it was was sex. And that, now, why is sex so powerful? That's really what this is getting down to. That there is a, a sexual bond that happens when two people engage in that together. And that's not just... Um, a, a physiological thing that's just not an emotional thing that is a spiritual bond of how God created us how do we know that? Genesis 2.24, what's it say? Reagan yeah, alright so when God created Adam and Eve he laid down the basics of marriage that when you leave your parents' house, and you leave your parents' house, and you get a house together, and the wedding vows are said, and everything is done, what do you do? You come together, and you become one flesh. One entity. You are now bonded together in this covenant that the Bible calls marriage. Now, I don't think post Malone is thinking about a biblical covenant when, he, when he's tying this together, but this is how we need to look at it, right? This is how we need to look at this, because when he talks about it, it's just the sex, sex is a very powerful but good thing in the right context. As a married person, sex is worth waiting for, because to share that with my wife, or and wives to share with your husband, and for you to wait for your husband or wife, will be one of the greatest days of your life physically and spiritually. Because it is something that God meant as absolute blessing for you. It is a gift to marriage. And when that happens, it's exactly what Reagan read that, right? You, you leave and you cleave and there is a bond that is made between a husband and wife that was meant to last the rest of their life. That's what happens. All right, but here's what's world. Let me, let me give you a quick illustration. Right? So, um, I have two pieces of paper, right? So today, um, I was doing a science experiment, and um, Bryce went. So, Bryce is going to be my assistant here. So, yeah, Bryce, Bryce. Uh, yep, yep, he's my man of white. <laughs> so, Bryce, mm. here's what I want you to do. These two pieces of paper are glued together. There's a bond between these papers. Here's what I want you to do. In one minute, as I talk, I want you to tear apart these two pieces of paper, okay? Neatly and nicely. All right, I want two separate sheets of paper. I want one, one pink piece and one blue piece. Can you do that for me? Can you do that? Okay, all right, one minute. So, as Bryce is doing that, all right? Leaving and cleaving, what does that mean? That means that as you leave, right? I am under my parents' 
um, authority when I'm at their house. My parents tell me what to do. They pay my bills. All of those things, they buy my food. All of those kind of things, right? But when I leave, here's what happens. When I get sick, I don't call my mom. I talk to my wife. If I call my mom, my wife gets mad. You know why? Because I am now bonded to my wife. That's what happens, right? When I leave and cleave, here's what happens. When Dana gets mad at me when I say something dumb, you know what she doesn't do? She doesn't go, I wish you were more like my dad. Because she's not under her parents' authority anymore. She is now bonded with me. And now we work together through sickness, through health, through finances, through intimacy, through so many things, we are together. Now Bryce is working there. Bryce, how's it going? <laughs> You're terrible at this job. <laughs> All right. Come on, Bryce. Preston, come do a better job. Bryce, we love you. Come on up, Bryce. Come on. Yeah, Bryce. Tear this apart. Nice and neat. Okay? You got it? Let's do a good job, Preston. Don't, don't mess up. So, let me keep reading. Because Jesus even says, if that's Old Testament, I go, okay, we're under law. Uh, that, that's the law. But, and it's not a law. It's Genesis. But let <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let me read this really quick guys. Here's what it says And Jesus said to them He's talking about divorce here Alright, this is Matthew I can hear Horrible Horrible things Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh, so why? So they are no longer two, but one. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. Now, you've done just a bang up job. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Preston. Don't clap for that. So, this is what happens, right? Now, let's say this represents our very couple, right? There's a bond there. The bond in here was Elmer's glue, okay? But when people come together in marriage, what bonds them together? There's a relationship between themselves, all right? There's a, a uh, relationship of love, of choosing to love you. There's those emotions, which are great. We can't base everything on emotions. There's um, physical intimacy, which is great. It's a gift of God, but there's also this bond of God holding us together. That's a wonderful thing. So what happens when, when humans come and they try to tear apart something that God put together is that it always ends up messy. It always does. I have never seen or heard of a married couple who got divorced and left unwounded. Never once has that happened. I've never seen any teenager, college student, or adult who has had any kind of physical intimacy before marriage that should not happen, who when they broke up with that person didn't feel a piece of themselves lost. This is what we're seeing, right? Because even if you could get this off, what ends up happening? Some of the other comes with it, right? Because these were never meant to be torn apart. But what brought these together was a plan and a purpose. And when God brings two people together, there are a lot of things that bring people together. There's God, there's the people, there's the acts of love, there's the physical relationship, there's the intimacy, there's, there's joy, there's, there's so many things that stick a married couple together that are only supposed to be for that married couple. And when it goes the wrong way or when it happens too early, it hurts when it tears apart. Every time it will hurt and you will always end up in a mess. Here's what the world wants to do, right? 
Their own world wants to say, no, 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 no. This right here, this bonding stuff, that has nothing to do with sex. That is, that, 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 no. This is what the world thinks of relations, right? Because the world says, if I want to have sex with, with my girlfriend, then look what happens when, when I tear this apart. Nothing. Everything's fine, right? Everything's fine. And I can do this again, and I can do it again, and I can do it again with this girlfriend, and I can do it with this guy, and I can do it here, and I can do it here, and I can do it as many times as I want. And you want to know what? These post-it notes, they're perfect when I take them off. We want to know something? God didn't create us like post-it notes. God created us for relationship. In a marriage that was not going to end in its life. God created us to come together with a husband and a wife with the purpose of being stuck together forever. And God created this act of sex as a gift, not as a try it out and make sure it's okay. We think if I give myself away, if I give my first kiss, if I give my first this, if I give my first whatever away, it's not going to hurt. I will promise you, it will hurt when you break up. Because God created us to be together in those things. And we don't think about those things. Right? We watch all the TV shows, and there's the, the first kiss and the, you know, the first date, and how far can you go, and man, I mean, she must really love him, and he must really love her, because they gave each other in their love. They did everything together to show how much they love each other. But what they don't tell you in the TV show, and what they don't tell you in the movie, is what about when they break up, and now when you do get married, you have to have those conversations with your spouse about what you've done beforehand. Sex, intimacy, the physical nature of who we are is great in the right context. It is amazing with your spouse. It is absolutely dangerous outside of the confines of marriage. And that's, this, is, this song is, is teaching us that. It's funny. I don't know if he, he meant to teach us that, right? But the reason they can't get away, the reason they keep going in circles, the reason these emotions are so strong is because they have participated in an act that was meant for a lifetime. That's why they can't get away from each other. Because God created us for that act in the context of marriage and all of all people everywhere are created in the image of God. It doesn't matter if you know them or not. All people are created in the image of God. So when a person has sex with another person, there is a tie to that person that doesn't go away. If you don't believe me, talk to someone who's been married for some time and ask them if they still regret what they did before they were married. And I guarantee they say yes. We like to take these things lightly. It's just a part of being a teenager. It's the college experience. No, it's absolutely sin. That's what it is. And I'm not saying this to, to come down on you. I'm not saying this to, to, to make you feel bad. I'm not calling you out in any way. I want to protect who you are as a child of God. And if you've already crossed those lines, guess what? I still love you, and Jesus loves you. Just because you've done those things doesn't mean hope is gone. Absolutely not. That is a lie straight from the enemy. You are not unfixable. You are not used goods. You are not sloppy seconds. You are a child of the king. And you are valuable, and you have worth. And you could start right now saying, I have done bad things and I repent of those things, but from this moment forward, me 
is for my spouse. How do we know this? 1 Corinthians 7, 3 through 5. Who's got that? Ben, read that nice and loud. Here's what this verse is saying. Verse 4, really important. The wife does not have authority over her own body. That's not what the world teaches. We know that. Likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body. So who has authority over your body? God and your spouse. That's how important God thinks sex is. And he personally involved in who you are in that relationship. So if you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend who's pressuring you and pushing you to do those things, let them know in the name of Jesus, I don't belong to you. I don't even belong to me. I belong to Jesus and I belong to whoever puts a ring on it. And if you are that person who is pressuring the significant other, I pray that you repent of your sin and stop doing that because that person doesn't belong to you. Guys, the world has muddled the beautiful nature of what sex is and made it something so crass and so disgusting. I couldn't even do the first few songs on the billboards. The way that, that people in music refer to women is, is disgusting. The way that music refers to the role of a man is so, it's so, such a lie. But guys, God has a beautiful, beautiful plan for sex and marriage. And it is worth the wait absolutely worth the wait. And it's going to be tempting. And the world's going to say, you're just like a post-it note. It's not going to hurt. I'll oh, just go to the next one, 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 go to the next one. But I, I want you to remember, God talks very heavily about leave and cleave. You're bonded. Romans 12, 1 through 2, who has that? Lexi, do you have that? Nice and loud. Your body is a living sacrifice. So what we've learned, you were created for marriage, you are created to be satisfied in your spouse and in God. You are to leave and cleave. You don't belong to you. And everything that your body is for is to honor God. If you're in a relationship and you're not honoring God with your body, leave. If you're married in a relationship and you're not honoring God with your body, counsel. Don't get to leave then. If you're in a relationship and you're pushing someone to do something with their body that is not honoring God, stop. Guys, I, man, I wish I could preach this for the next 12 hours. Because I have two daughters that are going to be there soon. Man, I pray. I pray. I pray. I pray. Holding out for what God has created is so much better than what the world has offered. It's a beautiful thing that God has given us. Don't waste it. And I really mean that word. Don't waste it on someone who hasn't chosen to be devoted to you forever. That's what God wants. That's the desire of God. 
again, let me encourage you. If you've already messed up, you've already gone too far, you still have value and you are still loved. You're not a waste. You're not gross. You're in need of a savior just like everybody else. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this time. God, I pray that as we look at these songs, God, they're, they're fun, they're catchy. There's a reason that they're popular. But God, the message of this song is not the message of the Bible. The message of this song is sin. The message of the song is not your plan for relationships. It's not your plan for dating. It's not your plan for free. God, thank you, though, that we get to look at these songs and really discern how great you are by these gifts that you've given us in marriage, and in sex, and in intimacy, and in romance, and true love, not artificial love. God, I pray for these students in here that as they are going into relationships, I pray that your hand will be upon those relationships, that they will listen to wise counsel around them, be it a parent or, or a leader or a pastor or whatever it may be, God, that they will set up those boundaries that, that won't be crossed. And God, I pray for those who do cross them, that they will understand that repentance is always available and that your love is always there. You will never stop loving them. They are never gross enough. They are never broken enough. You love them and you find value in who 